I introduce the next presenters, Viola and um, Stuart. Um, both are quite experienced. I know Stuart has been working also extremely in the uh, Mint Directors Conference Technical Committee, and I've been reading also from ScanCoin from Bjorje um, that he is not very young anymore. He's also 25 years of experience, which is a good, a good part. Thank you for joining the stage and please start your presentation, which will be EMS security and the implications of plating type, outer layer, thickness and durability. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Dieter and uh, Thomas, to give us the opportunity to have this presentation. And um, I and Scott will talk about EMS and about different plating uh, types and um, results of that. Um, when you design a coin, there is of course a number of different things you consider. You have visual features, physical, you choose material, where we have had a lot of focus so far today. We talked about plating and um, polymer and, and a lot of new interesting things. But there's also a mention about EMS. And I want to take the opportunity to talk a little bit about what is EMS. ScanCoin, we are dealing with the coins out in circulation. And from us, EMS is the thing we measure the coins with when they're out in circulation. EMS stands for electromagnetic signature. And that is uh, the unique electrical properties of a coin. And this is basically the same for all the machines. You can take vending machines, uh, sorting machines, all machines that is actually accepting coins out in society. They are basically working on the same way. And the mass is depending on, of course, the physical size of the coin, the shape, the construction, the material, and the wear. In the typical application, the coins is moved and passed through a sensor. And on a vending machine, we maybe have a speed of one coin per second. But on a high speed sorter, we maybe pass 100 to 150 coins per second. So this measurement is, due, is done in a couple of milliseconds. And eddy currents are induced in the coin by the electromagnetic sensor. And as these decay, recordings are made, which was presented a little bit earlier today. It's the same technique. There are other techniques that could be used, like optical and mechanical, but they're more used for additional readings where, where the EMS as such is not enough. So what, what readings do we include in the EMS? Of course, we have the physical uh, parts like the diameter, which we normally measure with optical and or inductive ways. Thickness could be measured in many different ways, mechanical, inductive, capacitive, or acoustic way. And then you come to the material. And one of the big parameters there is, of course, the conductivity, which could be measured both on the surface and in the core. Magnetic properties, like permeability. And then you can do some math around the hair and do a logarithms that combine all these parameters to get the, even one more parameter. And for special cases, we, we can add even more. We can have knurling sensors, color sensors, but these are the major ones. When when a new coin is designed, there is, there is a number of things you need to add on that you need to consider. Counterfeiting uh, is of course one. Problems with counterfeiting is, is very different from country to country. There are some countries with quite big counterfeiting problems. Other countries don't have that much problems, but it's something that needs to be considered. 
One thing that we see more and more is problems with similar coins from um, other countries. As more and more coins is plated coins, then we have almost the same material. And uh, we see more and more crossover problems in the sorting machines. Quality. Do the central bank in the country have a special request to keep a certain quality level on the coins in circulation? How do you do when you want to remove a coin from the market? End of life. Could it be recycled? Or how could it be recycled? And of course, what is the spread from production when it comes to tolerances and how to control that? Uh, I will now hand over to Scott, because, um, as you know, the topic from the beginning is how where could influence this uh, the EMS parameter. So, please, Scott. Thank you, Boria. What I want to speak about today is just to expand a little bit on what uh, Boria has uh, in, uh, introduced there, and also to to sort of demonstrate that while the, the world is moving towards more and more uh, plated coins in circulation, we need to keep up with our understandings of EMS. And we use these words that we, we, we band the three letters around EMS quite readily. Um, but we really need to have a, a really good understanding of, of what that means and its importance in security and also how that may develop over the lifetime of a coin. So at the, the Royal Mint, we've been looking uh, extensively for many years um, at the different plating technologies, the benefits the, um, for each of them, and also the, um, what we're talking about here, the, the EMS, the vending signatures. So worth uh, just mentioning a little bit um, about the, the three layer, the three uh, different plating types that uh, we're going to talk about today um, briefly. So we're all familiar with the, the mono layer, the, the single ply plate, which you see on the left there. In the middle, uh, we've got a, a dual layer, dual plate um, uh, uh, example, which has the, the copper uh, against the steel, thick copper layer, and a thin nickel layer on top of that. And finally, on the right, an example of multiply uh, coin, which has a thin layer of nickel, um, a sandwich in the middle layer of copper, and again, a thin nickel layer on the outside. So these three examples would all appear, you know, the silver color, nickel plated uh, color. So it's worth um, reminding ourselves um, of the, the, the considerations which uh, Boria touched on um, when considering a single layer to uh, multi-layer or dual layer plated coins. So there's obviously the manufacturing variability to take into account. Um, for, e for each of the processes, quite distinct processes between um, each technology. Obviously, material availability. Um, if you know, we're talking circulating coin, there's large amounts, so that's a, an important uh, consideration. The ratio of plate to the substrate. In each of these cases, this is what uh, the, the EMS is looking at, which we um, will touch on in a, in a moment. So you've got this um, with the different frequencies of, uh, of the sensors, this uh, ratio is uh, obviously very important. On the single, la uh, single uh, layer, the single plate material on the outside compared to the thinner outer plate on multi-ply um, or dual plate. And then there's some um, considerations pecu uh, peculiar to um, multi-layer and dual plate. So the combinational effect of the thinner plate layers, uh, variabilities, so you know, in manufacturing tolerance, there's always pluses and minuses, and if you're uh, making you know, various layers, there's a combinational effect there. And then finally, for, a, for a visual purposes as well, you've got, if you've got a thin outer layer um, level, um, that, can, that can wear um, and produce the, you can see the, the substrate underneath there. And also the, the, the thinner layer wear can have a, a larger percentage effect um, than the uh, single layer plate. So if we move on to what looks like a very busy um, slide, what, uh, one of the main things I want to take away from, from this slide is that when we talk about EMS, it's not just one signal, uh, one single signal or one single result or a tick and a, you know, a yes, no, it is uh, far more complex. 
This is um, a detail from uh, a scan coin, uh, an ICP, a scan coin ICP9. And as you can see, there's various channels there. Um, now, for EMS, for, a, for a, a coin to be accepted, for a coin to be measured, what we're looking at there is, is each of those parameters and also um, the relationship between them. So the, the security is based on not only achieving you know, these certain channels, but also the relationship between them. Um, so if we look specifically at, at what we've got there, on the, the left-hand side, this relates to the, the physical dimensions, the way that that's measured optically and electrically, and at the edge. And if you look at the, the, the red plot, that's uh, um, what we've taken is some coins directly from, uh, from issue, similar size. Um, we're not comparing the, the, the specification here. This is to show typically what the, the, um, the, the key characteristics that we're looking at there. So for nickel plated steel, which is the, the red plot there, you can see on the, um, the left hand side, which is the, the physical dimensions, um, that uh, where it sits on the, the left hand side there. The green is a uh, copper plated steel, again it's um, uh, mono uh, layer. And then finally we've got an example of uh, triple plate, uh, which is the black. And some of the, the, the key points to, to note, um, if you notice the, the third plot down on the left there, um, very thin lines, that's the, the, the physical dimensions. And it shows that the, the, the specification of these has been met very, very tightly and you know, it's been well controlled physically. And one of the other uh, things to notice, on the right hand side, this is the, um, the, the conductivities, the, the different frequency, frequency conductivities. And if you notice, the, the multiply sits very close to the copper. Now this is an effect of, um, in multiply, the outer nickel layer is so thin that to um, a vending machine or to a, a, a scan coin in this case, it's, you know, it's, it's near on invisible. Um, so so th this, this effect is, is why you see that the, the, the black and the green on the right hand side, the material side, is, uh, is very close and overlapping. Um, if you also notice as well that the, uh, the, the spread um, on the, for the material side is uh, slightly wider on the, the copper and the multiply. Um, compared to the, the, the tight uh, windows on the, the left there for the, the nickel. Now what we, we've done at the, at the Mint is what we're, we're trying to do is we're exploring um, uh, security as a, as a, a big, uh, uh, big interest to, to us and obviously to all other Mints. Um, and what, what we want to do is to, to look at the security not just at the, uh, you know, the initial you know, nice new fresh coins minted but through the life of a coin. Now what we are, we're trying to do is to try and recognise that these key parameters, which ones move during the life of a coin, which ones don't, which are, which are inherent to the construction, which are inherent to the, uh, the physical properties. So what I'm just going to um, go through uh, very briefly is looking at each of the, the three uh, pieces that we, we've seen here. We've artificially worn them. Now, where is a whole different subject that we're not, uh, not going to go into here, so don't worry. Um, what we've done here is we've worn the edges of the coin. This is a very typical um, uh, mode of, of wear. We've worn them down to the steel, so this is completely to um, you know, the end of a, a, a coin's life cycle. So if we look at, first off, this is uh, the nickel plated steel, the mono layer nickel plated steel. So the black is as minted, so it's gone from black to red. Now, one of the, the interesting uh, points that you can see on the, the left-hand side, up at the top, is the electrical uh, diameter. So this is, this is the, the diameter of the coin as measured um, by one of the sensors. Now, as you can see, there's a, a very slight um, shift there. Still a, a relatively tight spread, but there's a slight shift. Now, obviously, the, the overall diameter of the coin hasn't changed um, that much, which you can see down at the, the third, um, third on the left down there. So that, that's a, an interesting phenomenon that when you've got the, the nickel, when the steel is exposed, there is a slight shift on the, the electrical diameter or the way that's been measured. Looking at the right hand side, again, this is relating to the, the conductivity, so the material uh, properties um, of the plate. Again, very tight, sitting on top of each other, which is what we expect. There's minimal wear on the, on the, the middle of the coin there, so there's not a lot uh, of change there. If we come across to, again, to another monolayer, which is the, 
Sorry. No problem. So if we look at the, the, the copper plated there, again on the left we've got a, a similar sort of uh, uh, distribution there. On the right hand side, the properties of the, the actual plate, very, very wide, very um, uh, messy and still uh, following uh, the same pattern that we expect. For the multiply, again, what we we're seeing, which is quite interesting, on the, the electrical diameter, which is, uh, again, this, this, uh, it's, not, it's not physical diameter, the electrical diameter, we've got a slight um, shifting of the, the population again, which again is reflected further down um, on the bottom of that left-hand side. Again, the, the centre properties, the material properties remain uh, consistent with what we'd expect. So, I'll briefly go through that. I think everybody's aware of the, the EVA handbook and the, the CRO. <coughs> so, some of the, the, the conclusions. This is very much the, just a, an introduction to, to, um, to what we're doing, to um, looking at the, the plated technology, the way that it ages, the way that it performs, not just you know, as new coins, which is part of the, you know, the innovation. We need to look at the whole life cycle um, of the coin. The plating layer type and thickness is, is critical for validation security. Uh, it really is, we, you know, we, we, we all know the influence of, uh, of the various plated layers, um, or lack of influence, as the case may be. And the changes to the plate are very, very significant. The production specification, so, you know, are, is it being manufactured to a tight specification or to a wide specification? The production tolerances, obviously, as I mentioned, every process has its own tolerance, so the more processes, you know, there's a combinational effect there. And then, as, uh, as I've been mentioning, the whole wear and circulation is, is going to be critical to, uh, uh, to the EMS security. And we need to know the EMS over the whole life cycle um, of that coin, not just the, the, the visual appearance, which uh, may change in some instances. Okay, thank you very much for, uh, for listening, and uh, I hope I sped it up a, a little bit there, Peter. Thank you.